in five, four, three, two, one. Hola, hippies. Buenos dias, paz in nuestro barrio. If you're having a mm, good week in a pleasant or at least tolerable well, working conditions, thank a union member the next time you see one. Um, welcome. This is Dr. Woody's uh, As the Cookie Crumbles. Uh, Today, our topic will be, um, at least take a memo. I think one day in the summer of 1971, upon emerging from a drunken night of frantic prayer binging and self-flagellant masturbation, Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger stared in horror from the bunker beneath the White House and beheld several hundred thousand angry, fearful, worried, threatened young people from all over the country who were thronging to the National Mall to protest the Vietnam War, and most of them were white. He was horrified. They were terrified. It was in their minds, in the official mind, nothing less tantamount to mutiny. It is difficult nowadays, I think, to recall how threatening that may have seemed at the time. Against this backdrop, however, let me introduce you to an associate justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Lewis Powell. In the photograph, he's standing, second from the left, but significantly, I think, on Reagan's right. Raise your hand if you've heard of Lewis Powell before now. Extra points if you've also heard of the Powell Memorandum. Lewis Powell was a successful tobacco lawyer, defending tobacco companies in Richmond, and a staunch Republican and corporatist, free marketeer ideologue. Nixon tried several times to put him on the court. He finally succeeded in October of 71. Powell, then sitting on the boards of 11 major corporations, finally acceded, but before his official nomination became an, uh, uh, well known, he wrote a very detailed and um, instructive memorandum to his friend Eugene Sidendor Jr., the director of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, then as now, an influential, incredibly influential lobbying organization. The member, I mean, sorry, the memorandum was dated August 23rd of 1971, two months prior to Powell's actual nomination. Jack Anderson got a copy, and he tried to raise a stink about it questioning Powell's potential impartiality on these matters, but somehow hmm, that never came out during the hearings. Don't you wonder about that? Sometimes, hippies, I do. Eventually it was revealed, but not until well after Powell's confirmation. Known as the Powell Memorandum, its contents spell out in careful points and impeccable logic with legal footnotes galore the way that the corporate right would, and eventually did, assume control of the mean and modes of production of intellectual and cultural capital in the USA, solely, therefore, eventually, for the aggrandizement of the corporate image and ethos. There's a link to the complete document on my Anosognosia blog. The plan outlined in the memo became actually the template for the successful corporate coup d'etat initiated by Reagan and finished by the Chimperer and Cheney and now being burnished to a high shine by the current incumbent, the tallest midget, it was, over time and gradually, to insert uh, purist, pro-corporate conservatives into the highest levels and echelons of all the U.S. cultural and educational centers, media, schools, universities, museums, libraries, anywhere where they could take hold. And those unseen wire pullers, remember those that Edward Bernays talked about, they would direct the climate more favorably there from for the uh, free marketeers' interests. Uh, sounds pretty familiar. Powell, like so many of his age and class, notoriously his ideological soulmate in the White House, and also, and equally notoriously, say, Alan Bloom of Columbia, among others, they were extremely distressed by the rebellious, youth-centered counterculture of the 60s and 70s, and fearful that the anti-corporate implications it held for social justice and perhaps the eventual fair distribution of social goods might threaten the established order, and he, they actually, all of them, were fiercely opposed, you might imagine. They were, in the argo of the time, 
freaked right the fuck out, as a matter of fact. And the memorandum is the product of those fears. Now, Powell, an acknowledged talk on corporate privilege, was the spiritual godfather, as I mentioned, of the whole oligarchy coup that came to fruition under Reagan. He, he cast, in fact, the decisive vote and wrote a majority opinion in the landmark uh, uh, corporate personhood case called First National Bank of Boston versus Bellotti an infamous 1978 decision that was cited, of course, in the Citizens United that actually invented um, the First Amendment right, so-called, for corporations to actively influence a, a, a ballot question. At the time, he was extolled as a social moderate on social issues, but um, he voted to uphold anti-sodomy laws in Georgia, and he voted to uphold the death penalty almost every time he saw it, especially in the face of documentation which demonstrated pretty conclusively even then uh, that other than as punishment for the most heinous of crimes, people who killed whites were significantly more likely to receive the death penalty as punishment for their crimes than people who killed mere blacks. Um, Indeed, he seldom met a death penalty statute he didn't like, and he cited with Bakke against the University of California in the case that effectively began to reverse anti-discrimination and restorative initiatives for minority students in public universities. Hmm, maybe I think moderate meant something different in those days. Anyway, probably, though, the template provided by his memo to that USCOC is his greatest and most lasting social influence. This gave impetus and direction to the right-wing think tank phenomenon. He more or less invented the Heritage Foundation and the rest sort of followed along mm, wherever they could find a compliant, sympathetic, and generous billionaire. As noted, um, he thereby did most of the legal spade work for what became the Reagan business coup of 1982 and 94 which is, as events have shown, the most successful so far. I interesting sidebar, surely is an, a matter of just accident or coincidence, I suppose. There was a previous Lewis Powell from Virginia who gained a certain amount of notoriety about a century and a half ago. He was hanged as a conspirator in the Lincoln assassination. Um, we can talk about such things in Butterfly Wings when I see you at the beach, Chibis. Ciao.